So I promised a video on the database folder plugin. Now I use this plugin a lot specifically for keeping track of my myriad of input notes or literature notes, however you want to call them, and my general Zettelkasten notes. So the two biggest swaths of information in my vault are all looked at through a single pane of glass, which is the database folder plugin. And I use it for a variety of purposes, and I still haven't even scratched the surface of the plugin. There is so much more that you could do, but oftentimes I tend to err on the side of simplicity, because why complicate something when you get 98% of what you need through the basics, and is that last 2% of juice worth the squeeze of trying to implement something a little sketchy and eh. So, database folder. How do we set it up? How do I use it? And let's take a look. Want to get the latest releases of my Obsidian template vault and all of the work that I do in Obsidian, including the latest updates to my custom theme and CSS, supporting me on GitHub sponsors at any recurring tier for any of those amounts, will get you private access to the GitHub repository where all of my updates, everything from my template vault is updated in near real time with constant updates, tag releases, and helpful documentation, tutorials, and other content specifically for sponsors only. Want to report issues that you find and have them resolved swiftly? Or just talk and have discussions about what you may have found or what you might have questions about in the template vault and get priori prioritized responses from me? And becoming a sponsor of my template repository will get you all of this and more. Thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. Now, I love this plugin because it gives you a awesome view of like the metadata, uh, specifically the YAML um, data at the top of your files. It can display this all in a columnar and grid type format, reminiscent of Excel or a SQL Server database output. And it can all be fed from data view queries. Like it really is like this is a data view query, a super simple one at that. And then you can provide filters and conditional options things that let you actually control what is displayed here. And there's also settings that you can implement where you can add new fields and it will add that data to your files in mass. And if you update or delete those uh, pieces of data or those columns, it will potentially, depending on your settings, do the exact same. Delete a bunch of uh, data from all of your files, it can do that. Combining that with custom JavaScript functions that you can actually have dynamically generate content that can then be actually added to all those files immediately, it becomes a very powerful database-like solution that is intended to be uh, Obsidian's version of Notion databases. Now, this does bear a large amount of similarities to the Projects plugin, but they are different, and I might touch on that later. But overall, Database Folder plugin is super awesome for having that data view-driven base of information and then applying a lot of super awesome and easy features to use on top of it. So how do we set up and configure this plugin? If we go to the uh, community plugins and we make sure that we do have database folder, db folder, there it is. I do have it installed. It's pretty popular and fairly uh, regularly updated. So options or database folder under community plugins. These are my settings. Um, I still haven't figured out all the things about this plugin because there's already so many plugins to deal with, but there's a lot of things I haven't even begun to scratch the surface. So this could change at a moment's notice. And if it does, then people who are subscribed to my uh, sponsors only template vault on GitHub sponsors will see first and the next release of my template vault via my newsletter will see it afterwards. But Things change in real time for me. I'm always changing stuff and playing with it. So these are my settings as of right now. I like to have compact cell size because my eyes aren't very bad, so I can see lots of content very easily. I don't like having the first column sticky because I like to have my file names in the left. And I usually tend to use very long and verbose file names, so I don't like to have that setting anymore. Uh, I don't like to play with fire when it comes to removing a field and then it deletes it from all those files because one wrong move and it's just a hassle to deal with. Uh, so I tend to leave that off, but say I want to do something which I just did, which was remove my old supercharged links uh, YAML metadata type and status, since I'm just using tags anyways, I want to remove all those. So I simply turn this option on, open up all those files with the database folder plugin, delete those columns, and then it's deleted from all of the files immediately. Super handy when you want to do a big operation like that. 
Um, I have these particular ones activated, still need to play around with all this, and most of the rest of this is pretty default. Um, the default pagination size is 10, and it should be noted that these are the plugins configurations for when you create a new database folder. So you might not need to do this at all. You could simply customize each individual database to have its own options. But these are the like global settings for new database folders. So there we go. Awesome. Uh, and you can grab that configuration from the template vault as well. So how am I setting this up and how am I doing this? So you've probably seen me talk about these different folders that I have, the database folders that I use, which is primarily my research input notes and my Zettelkasten actual notes. And I use these in a very particular way. So I'll just start with my inputs, um, which is my research database folder. So when I open up the settings for this, it's a data view query and it's simply pulling everything from my inbox tag, which is all of my input notes use the tag. And I don't want anything from readwise because readwise is kind of like just a, a drop it here point. And then from there, I take those files as they sync into my Obsidian Vault grab a copy and put it into the vault. And then I'm done with Readwise. I don't want that stuff showing up anywhere else. So there's that. And then if I create a new entry into this, which I never do, then it would just go to the inbox. Some information, metadata, I like compact cells. And then a lot of this is just, I think, defaults and stuff from the default plugin configuration. So really the meat and potatoes of these single panes of glass uh, database folder views into my notes are really the data, the data view query and then the progressive filters that I apply, these things. So how did I do all of this? And how do I do it so that I can say, I want all of my unfinished or unprocessed things and I want it by a particular type. So these are all of the unprocessed podcasts, unprocessed tweets, etc. How do I do that? So inside of this particular icon right here, you can create filters. And what I've done is I've created a group or several groups. So one group is the group of uh, status, basically. And it's a list of all of these rules, which is, um, which is the, the name of it, which is just the red square. And that's what's actually shown there. And then it's an and. So it's always progressively and, 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 and. And then all of these are searching the tags for the content of whatever is in that square. So these are saying the red square searches for tags that contain the red square. And the orange searches the tags that contain orange. The reason I, it's an and statement is that once you select one of them, then that one is applied. The others don't get applied. So it's saying essentially when I select the red one, um, this one has to be present and, 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 and these are not present. So it's really easy. At least that's how I'm interpreting it. I could be wrong on that though. So after all of that, we have uh, the tags must contain an inbox item, which is a given because that's what's being brought by the data view query and tags cannot be empty. Ultimately, the data view query kind of takes care of that, so I really don't need those, but before in prior um, settings, I was doing that, so I could probably remove those. And then the last grouping of filters is the content type, and it's the same same paradigm. Uh, the name of it is the emoji, and then the tag contains the emoji, which corresponds to that input type, and these are all ands. So I'm left with just this giant bar of emojis. So instead of it being text and taking up a lot of extra room, it's single emoji and I can easily interpret what's going on. I want all of my unprocessed research papers, nothing. Okay, so let's go to videos. There we go. And now I have a list of all of those items. And should I eventually add more metadata to this, I can add new columns and edit and add and delete and mess with more metadata for, th for this. Now, something else that's really interesting is that I could take a view of this data as it currently is. So let's actually go back to unprocessed videos and I can actually export a CSV of this information. So let's export that. And then once I download that and it open it up, research CSV, here we go. And so now, here is that exported CSV. Now the tags display as this weird binary stuff, but don't worry, they're, they're maintained. 
but it essentially keeps the file paths of those files that were listed there and all the information here. So if you had something and then dynamically generated um, the like content with say JavaScript inline functions, etc., you could actually export information and you could keep track of something inside of the database folder plugin, uh, which is pretty cool. But one thing you can also do is you can actually uh, import items. So I'm going to actually do a preview view. So you can see once I do the preview on Mac, um, it'll actually show you that, hey, the tag is retained even though it looks weird. And so this file does not exist in my vault. It's a book note at the, in, in my actual that'll cost in vault, the Z folder. It has the date of today, testytest.md. It's created on arbitrary timestamp I made and it's modified arbitrary timestamp with a tag. Wrong tag, but whatever. So I can take this um, exported CSV, I already can just configure it however I want, and I can actually import it. So if I actually go back and I want to go to my book notes, well, actually it's going to be under tags, so technically it would appear under tweets, and I can import a CSV, and I'm going to say import that CSV, saved zero rows from new database.csv, but whatever that means, but here it is. Here's the file. It has that particular tag, it's a tweet, green status, and it has all this stuff. Now if I go to my inbox, I'll see it's actually here. If I go to the note, it's imported by that tag because the tag was listed in the database um, folder export or that imported CSV. And now the note gets created. And because my default creation point is the inbox, it gets dropped there. But you could use the importing of a CSV into the database folder plugin to create a bunch of new files en masse. And because you have the um, the file path, eh, I'm not sure if it would also re uh, retain a folder structure, even if it is in your main, uh, like say you, you listed the creation point as inbox slash folder name slash file. I'm not sure if it would respect the folder name, but I mean, I don't usually use this piece of functionality. It's just something I just noticed and it was cool. So we do have that. And I can delete that and it would delete itself from the database. So there's that option and you can add rows manually and then pick from a template. So you could actually pick a template if you wanted to do that. This doesn't work for my use case, but it's an example of something that is possible. Um, and you could open the folder, the, the actual database folder as Markdown, which really doesn't help you much. It just shows you a bunch of configuration. So like, here's a bunch of configuration stuff. I carumba. So there's a bunch of other options and things here. And that's my research note. And then the, the Zettelkasten notes is really kind of the same thing, except that the actual filters are just the different statuses. So I got my boat notes, I got my maps of content, I have people, and then all of the Zettelkasten notes through stages of processing. Technically the people notes should probably be under the other one, but whatever. So these are the simple ways that I'm using the database folder plugin. It's a super useful plugin. So I hope you find this light, lightweight review uh, helpful, interesting, informative, or fun. And let me know how you're using the database folder plugin. Uh, I'm always looking for new and interesting things to look in and look into or try. And I'd love to see your use cases, especially if they differ wildly from mine. Please let me know. And yeah, I'll catch you all in the next one.